All right, <clears throat> hello seventh graders. We're starting a new unit. We can, so kind of our goals for today is we can identify properties of addition. Excuse me, I gotta sneeze. Woo. And multiplication. And we can use these properties to solve problems. Okay, that's what we try to do in math. So one of the properties that we're gonna talk about today is the multiplicative identity. And um, this one is something you already know, you may not have called it this, but this identity is, is stating that anything multiplied by one equals itself. So I could say A times one equals A. That would be like our generic term. Again, A could be anything. You could say five times one equals five. So anything multiplied by one is going to give you the original value, the original amount. And it's kind of similar with the additive identity, except it's not adding one, it's adding zero. So anything plus zero is going to equal our original amount. So the multiplicative identity uses multiplication. We multiply by one. The additive identity uses adding zero to get the same number. Commutative property is all about... Um, kind of the order that we do things. So I'm just gonna kind of put the order here. And so like, for example, I'm gonna use a variable example and I'm also gonna use a numerical example. So if I said that A plus B would be the exact same thing as doing B plus A. Now this commutative property let's make a note of this, works for addition and multiplication, okay? So again, we can also say A times B equals B times A. So now we'll do some numerical examples. Let's say five plus two equals two plus five, or five times two equals two times five. Again, seven equals seven, 10 equals 10. So those are two examples, again, using addition and sub a multiplication. These properties for both commutative and associative work for addition and multiplication. And the associative property is kind of similar but this one's all about grouping symbols, AKA parentheses, brackets, okay? How are we grouping these numbers together? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I have parentheses, A plus B plus C equals, I can change where I have my parentheses and I'm still going to get the exact same answer. Now remember, this also works for multiplication. So let's say we have parentheses A times B and then multiplied by C on the outside. Well, I can also do A parentheses B times C and get the same exact answer. So let's do a numerical example. Let's say, let's just keep it real easy. Parentheses one plus two plus three equals one plus parentheses two plus three. I know I have to do what's inside my parentheses first. One plus two is three, three plus three is six, which equals one, two plus three is five, but one plus five equals six. So I end up getting the same answer. Similar over here, okay? One times two times three equals one, parentheses, two times three, one times two is two, two times three is six, 
and then one times two times three is six. Because of our multiplicative identity, we know that we get the same answer. So knowing what these properties are and how to apply them is super important because it's going to help you solve variables and solve unknowns. So looking at this first one, I see I have five multiplied by seven equals seven multiplied by five. Again, that's talking about how I kind of order my parentheses or my multiplication. So we would call this the commutative property of multiplication. C times one, okay, C times one equals C. That is our multiplicative identity. Multiplicative identity. So we gotta fill this one in. Seven plus A is the same thing as A plus seven. And again, if I change the order, of my addition, I would say that this is the commutative property, not of multiplication this time, of addition. And last but definitely not least, I see I've got parentheses in this one. So again, when you see those grouping symbols, that's kind of a hint that we may be looking at the associative property. So instead of putting my parentheses around x, y, I'm gonna say, well, I wanna do five times x and then multiply it by y. No problem, that's going to be the associative property of multiplication, okay? Again, I shortened it a little bit. I used com and prop. Um, malt, add, um, that's totally fine. Again, as long as I can tell. Remember, for these two, commutative and associative, you have to identify whether it's this one or this one, okay? Is it addition or is it multiplication? You have to identify that. Let's look at an example. Carlos rented a set of golf clubs for $7 and a cart for $12. He paid a fee for $23, find his total cost. All right, well, maybe I say, hey, I wanna change up this order to make it easier. So I'm gonna group these numbers together because they're gonna add nice. So I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna do seven plus 23 and then add 12 at the end. Well, seven plus 23 is 30 and 30 plus 12 gives me 42. So he's gonna pay a total of $42. So again, why this becomes helpful because it can make our job easier, our math easier for us to complete. And you can kind of see that right here using mental math. Again, I could do 81 plus six and then I could add nine, but it would be way easier if I did 81 plus nine, <laughs> two, plus, uh, two plus signs. 81 plus nine, and then I added six at the end. 90 plus six is 96. So again, using these properties can help make our job easy.